Providence Christian Church, so great to welcome you to our service. My name is Tony and I'm part of the admin team here. We're going to be actually wrapping up our lesson series called Are We There Yet? in just a few moments. So I invite you, if you haven't done so yet, go ahead and listen to the rest of the lesson series. It's actually in our playlist, Are, Are We There Yet? so that you can go ahead and start from the first one all the way down to this last lesson series. Now Michael's actually be talking to us about the similarities between the Christian church and an apple tree. So let's go ahead and listen in. But before we do that, since you're on our YouTube channel already, we're going to ask you to go ahead and subscribe to it. Go ahead and ring the notification bell so that you can stay up to date with everything that's happening here at Providence. And go ahead and give this video one like so that we can make sure that other people can see and share it with you. Now, also, if this is your first time, we invite you to fill out our connection card, providence.church forward slash connect. Let us know where you're listening to us from so that we can go ahead and reach out to you and just say hi and make you be part of the Providence family. Now, as I said, let's go check on those apples. Let's head over to the auditorium with uh, Michael Velasquez. Good afternoon. How are you today? I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. And for those who are watching online, we are glad you are here today. My name is Mike Velasquez. For those that don't know who I am, uh, you can call me Ms. Pr uh, Mr. Priscilla as well. So they, they know who I am. So I'm one of the church uh, volunteers here, and I'm glad to be here at the house of the Lord. And I'm glad you're here today. So uh, it is a blessing to be here at the house of the Lord. So today we are going to uh, close our uh, current series called uh, Are We There Yet? Are We There Yet? For the last uh, month of October, we have been reading about or lear learning about our God-given purpose for our lives and for the life of this church. And today, as we do the last lesson for this current series, we're going to be talking about uh, or learning about the importance of becoming a fruitful and productive church. Okay, so be, be, but I want to, uh, before we, we start, before we commence our, our time together, I want us to take a few moments uh, to pray, right? So let's, let's pray a little bit uh, for our time together, okay? So uh, Father in heaven, once again, be, we, we come before your holy presence. Father, recognizing who you are our Father, our Savior, our Creator, our Provider. We pray, Father, that, that, that you will clear our minds today and open our hearts to learn more about you through this lesson and through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Bless our time together and help us know you more and fully understand and embrace our life purpose, the purpose that you have given us for, from creation. We pray this in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. All right, but so before we dive into the lesson, I want to uh, re uh, revisit our uh, core scripture for uh, this current series, which is, uh, which is in uh, Philippians 1, 6. It's going to appear here, right here on the screen. Philippians 1, 6. And it says, I am certain that God who began the work within you will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. See, the Apostle Paul, when he wrote this to the uh, church of Philippi, he was trying to encourage the church of Philippi, uh, or the Philippians, to um, uh, just to continue doing the work that they were doing as newly uh, recent uh, Christian converts, okay? So they were going through a lot of troubles as a new church, but, uh, but the Apostle Paul says, do not lose hope, do not lose uh, 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 your faith. So they were trying to, he was trying to empower them to uh, remain strong and, and, and trust in God's deliverance for, for their uh, purpose as a local church. And I think the same uh, applies to us today. Uh, we want to hear these words, because we know that God has begun to do some work within us, right? It, it's an inward change that he's trying to do some work within us, and he will, be, he will not finish until it is finished. So God is, saying, God is saying, we'll get there when we get there, okay? And I'll let you know when we get there. So um, it, it is, it is, it, that, that's just awesome that God is doing that in our lives, okay? So, pl uh, so please uh, get your Bibles. And we are going to read something from the book of Acts. If you don't have your Bibles to, uh, with you today, 
that is okay. We're going to show the, the uh, biblical scriptures right here on the screens, okay? So we're going to go to the book of Acts, and uh, starting with chapter uh, 2, verses, uh, verse 37. So, but before we ask you, let me ask you a question before we start. And um, it's a simple question, okay? What does apple trees produce? What does an apple tree produce? Now, that's a simple question, right? And the answer is very simple, right? Apples, right? But the answer is not complete, okay? Because in our reality, what apples produce, I mean, apple trees produce apples. Well, apples, tr apples are meant to produce more apple trees. And those apple trees are meant to produce more apples that are meant to produce more trees. So apple trees is not the only thing, or apples, I'm sorry, apples are not the only thing that tree, apple trees produce. They also produce more apple trees. See, I like this picture uh, of the apple tree as a metaphor for the church. Uh, the local church must not only grow and produce fruit, or in this case, Christians, but they also, Christians are supposed to produce more churches so that the church can produce more Christians or more, more believers, more disciples of Christ, and in turn they can, uh, they can create more churches. So you get the idea, right? Okay, so um, in the book of Acts, and especially in the book of Acts, we can see uh, there was a, a huge explosion of, uh, of church growth recorded in the book of Acts, especially in, the, uh, in, in chapter 2. Uh, this took place because the early church clearly understood this concept of spiritual multiplication. And we can read that, uh, of such, we can read of such growth in the book of Acts of the apostles. So if you have your Bibles with you, go to Acts 2, starting with uh, verses 37 and 47. But before we, we read the text, I want to I give you a little background of what's going on here on the book of Acts. So Peter and the rest of the apostles are in Jerusalem, and they, are, they have gathered together during the day of Pentecost. Now, Pentecost was a day, uh, was a festival that the Jewish uh, people celebrated. So all these people from all over the world, all over the region got together, and so they are in the same, in the, uh, at, the, at, the, at the same city, at the same place, at the same time. There's thousands of people. So Peter, uh, standing there in the middle of, of this huge gathering of people, Peter delivered a powerful sermon to hundreds of people there that were present that day. And uh, so Peter's uh, sermon or teaching moment uh, was directed to communicate to the, to the crowd that Jesus is the Son of God. And at the same time, the, 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 he communicated that. He was saying that Jesus is the foundation of the Christian church. At the same time, um, Peter uh, takes advantage of that moment, uh, takes that opportunity to share the good news of, the, of salvation or the gospel with those that were listening to him. Okay, so let's read about what happens at the end of Peter's teaching of Acts on Acts 2, 30, uh, 37 to 47. Uh, here, I got it here. So when the people heard this, this is Peter's message, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord will call. He says, with other many words, he warned them and he pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. 41, he says, those who accepted this message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. 
All the believers were together. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily to those that were being saved. This right here, church, represents a fine example of producing, uh, of a fruit-producing church. This was uh, what we call an effective, eva- effective evangelism. That is, people giving their lives to Christ and becoming new disciples of Jesus. See, that happens when a church is committed to share the gospel and committed to become fruitful, that is, responding to God's command to reach to those that are far from God. Now, throughout the Bible, fruit become, has become or is a good um, growth indicator, okay? So it's a good indicator for those who are truly believers in Christ. So if you need to make an assessment of a tree, you need to look at the fruit, that is producing, okay? So you look at the, uh, you look at the tree, if, if, but if the tree doesn't, is not giving good fruit, that means that the tree is not healthy, okay? That tree needs some attention. So the same principle applies for us today as a church. If we are not producing, that means that something needs to happen. So, something needs to, we need to put, pay attention to what's going on. So, if we are spiritual fruitful, that will be noticed. But if we are not spiritual fruitful, that will be noticeable too. It doesn't matter how many trees you have in a, or how many fruit trees you have in a tree farm, okay? If they're not producing, then that's useless. It is the same with, with, with God. It, it is the same with the church. It doesn't matter how many Christians you have in the church, but if those Christians are not producing good fruit, then that may be useless. So we need to become a tree farm with trees that really produce some fruit because that is our mission as a church. If you're taking note, this is point number one of this lesson. The local church should be passionate about producing good fruit. The local church that includes Providence Christian Church, should be passionate about producing good fruit. Let's go to Matthew, Matthew 7. Uh, the book of Matthew is the first, is the first letter, or the first book of the, of the New Testament. So Matthew 7, 16 uh, to, no, to 20. And it says, by their fruit you will recognize them. Do people, do people pick uh, pick, uh, sorry, grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? He says, like, likewise, every good tree bears, bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit, it is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them by their fruit you will recognize them so the local church that includes providence christian church should be passionate about producing good fruit now from jesus perspective bearing good fruit has to do with uh, examining the way we live and the way we behave meaning uh to bear good fruit right to me to 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 do uh to bear spiritual fruit uh those are the uh, fruits of the Spirit that we call, right? They're in the Bible. Joy, uh, I'm sorry. It says uh, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So bearing good fruit is also, uh, also involves to uh, respond to God's call or God's command to make more disciples uh, and followers of Jesus. That is also good fruit. So the responsibility of the church uh, about in regards to Jesus' great commission found in Matthew 28 of making disciples 
It's, it's a responsibility for every single church, I- including Providence Christian Church. Okay? So bearing good fruit, it's uh, our responsibility. Teaching people the gospel, teaching people to become disciples of Christ. Okay? So, but the question is, how do we accomplish that? How do we get there? Uh, are we there yet when it comes to doing that? Okay? So, let's talk about it for a moment. Uh, I want you to go to the book of uh, the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John, uh, starting on verse, uh, on verse 5. No, I'm sorry. Uh, Gospel of John, chapter 15, starting on verse 1 to 5. And it says, Jesus says this, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. Well, every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be more fruitful. You are already, you are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Jesus says, remain in me and I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. He must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me, and I in you, you will bear fr- much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Now, those that know about gardening know that if a plant or a tree, uh, that a branch has to be attached to a stem, right? To the plant. And that branch is going to produce fruit but it has to be attached to the vine, to the stem, right? And it has to be attached because the root system is going to bring in, absorb water, bring the water and nutrients from the ground to the stem and into the branch so it could be, it could produce some fruit. The problem is that sometimes there's a blockage between the stem and the branch, that it's not allowing nutrients from the ground or water to go to the branch so it can produce fruit. So if you see a branch that is a little sad and dying and it's not producing good fruits because there's a blockage right there within the, within the, uh, um, uh, the plant and the stem, right? So uh, I think the same applies with us. Sometimes... Uh, we have to be connected to God, right? And if we are connected to God, we're going to get that living water and those nutrients, those, those, those minerals from his word and, and the, the, from the Holy Spirit. And we, if we remain connected to him, we're going to bear fruit. But sometimes there's some blockages. There's, there's a blockage sometimes right there that we need to deal with. And that blockage could be probably our unwillingness to have a truthful or, or, or a true relationship, uh, a meaningful relationship with God. Uh, the other blockage could be some, some sin that we have here that we have not dealt with, okay? That could, that, could, that could be a blockage too. So we have to remove that in order to have a productive and fruitful relationship with Jesus, Okay, that blockage between us and God could be caused by many things, and, and those could be some of them, okay? So, uh, to remain productive, we must remain connected to God. That's point number two. Point number two of this lesson says, the local church or the branch must be remain connected, must remain connected to the vine, Okay, so this connection between Jesus and his people has to exist, has to be strong. The, the, the connection, this connection is neither nominal or, or nor artificial. It is a living, it's, it's, a, it's a, a, a living union. Uh, so, because God's life goes out every day to us. And because he lives, we live. His affairs are our affairs. And our affairs are his affairs, okay? But we, but, but we can, what we need to do is we need to continue working on this, connect, on this connection all the time. We just can't allow a blockage to be in between us and God. 
We have to be connected to the branch or to the vine all the time. Because apart from him, we can do a thing. So when we, rec- when we receive Jesus, when we receive Jesus, he'll sustain us so that we can have a meaningful relationship with him. So we can have a constant communion with him. So how do we do that? How do we have a, 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 a communion with him? Well, the first one, the first step to a communion with God is prayer. Prayer. That's the way we talk to God, okay? So, a prayerless life is a life without Christ. A prayerless, a prayerless life is a life without Christ, without faith, without work, without consistency. He cannot bless us without prayer. If we don't pray, the only one that is being directly affected is us. Why? Because, we, because God wants for us to approach him, uh, to have an active approach uh, so that we can talk to him, so we can have a connection with him. And not, nothing will happen without an attack, uh, without a, a, this, this active approach to him. So we must pray without restrictions, with the assurance that as we pray, he will hear us. I love what 1 John 5, 14, 1 John 5, 14 is supposed to appear here. Um, that's not it. So I'm going uh, to read it right here. It says, this is the confidence that we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to, he will, to his will, he hears us. He will hear us. Since this communication with God is recipro- uh, recipro- uh, reciprocal, it, 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 as we speak to God through prayer, he also speaks back to us. He speaks to, to, uh, back to us to, uh, through his word, through the Bible, through reading the Bible. I love what Psalm 119, 119 one, uh, uh, sorry, 119, 105 says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light on my path. So as we, as we read the Bible, we can experience God in a, in a very amazing way. We can, we can come and, and learn more about him, learn about his nature, have a, a meaningful relationship with him because he will speak to us through his word. Can we say amen to that? The prophet Isaiah wrote about this very thing, okay, this, this very subject. Isaiah 55, 10 to 11, he said, As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth, it will not return me, it will, it will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I was sent, and achieve for the purpose, achieve the purpose, I'm sorry, for which I sent it. See, Isaiah uses the perfect metaphor of rain, of rain and snow. As water comes down from the sky by the force of gravity, it's, it's, it is not meant to, when it hits the ground, it doesn't bounce back up. It hits the ground, it's, it, as it comes down by the force of gravity, it doesn't make a U-turn before it hits the ground. Water comes down into the ground, it penetrates the soil to do the work that it's supposed to do. The Word of God is the same way. The word of God, it's, 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 God sends his word to us by the force of the Holy Spirit to us, and as it comes to us, right, it's not supposed to just bounce back to God or to just make a U-turn and go back to God. It's supposed to come in, it was meant to come in into our lives and do some work inside our hearts so that we, and that way we can, we can get to know him better. I love that just the way Isaiah puts that in perspective. So in addition to prayer and Bible reading, there's something else or something far more important 
than these two, and that is our attachment to the vine starts with a personal relationship with Christ, with Jesus. And that takes us to point number three, and final, the, the third and final point. The local church branch must know the vine. The local church must know the vine. If you want to become a true and effective disciple, if you want to become a fruitful church that is a healthy branch, we must remain attached to the vine and have a personal relationship with Jesus. However, that personal re- that, that relationship with Jesus is not, some, it's not simply knowing about Jesus. It's about having a personal relationship with him. To know him personally, that's what he wants. How many Astros fans in the house? Woo, right? Amen, amen. So I'm pretty sure that some of you know who uh, uh, Jose Altuve is, right? You know who he is, right? So you know that he plays for the Astros. You know uh, the position that he plays. You know that the, uh, you know some of his stats. You know uh, about his family. You know that he took the, the Astros to the, World Ser- to the World Series, right? So you know him very well. So let's say that you know a lot of things about Jose Altuve, right? And you go to his house. And you say, hola, Jose, Jose, it is me, your number one fan. I want to talk to you. I know, a lot about, I, I know you, man. I know a lot of uh, uh, things about you. Would you, would, you, would you let me into your house? I want to come into your house. What do you think he's going to say or do? He's going to say, get lost, dude. Right? You weirdo. Get, get lost. You know, you may know me and appreciate you knowing that's as nice that you know about me. But that doesn't mean that I know you. I don't know who you are. He's probably going to call uh, security and, and just drive you away, right? Drive you and just get away. So I think it's the same with God sometimes. We may know a lot of things about God. We, we, we may know about Jesus. We may know who he is. We may know what he has done in the past, I mean, for us. But it doesn't mean that we have a personal relationship with him. In fact, Jesus spoke about, uh, about this himself. He says in Matthew 7, 21, 23, Matthew 7, uh, it's supposed to appear here. He says, many will say to me on that day, this is Jesus speaking, by the way. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will say, I would tell them plainly, I never knew you away from me, you evil doers. Ouch. Ouch. So knowing Jesus is important, right? But if you you don't have a personal relationship with him, uh, knowing about him becomes useless. It's only head knowledge. It's only head knowledge. So if you want to become true disciples of Jesus... Effective and productive Christians, God wants us to switch from simple, passive church spectators to true disciples of Jesus. That is the difference between the two. Now, for the last two months, I've been challenging the, uh, the church staff to change the way we, we do church. Okay? Okay? Um, now, for years and years, the, the, the model of the modern-day church is to uh, produce and to put together all this nice uh, worship service with great music, great musicians, and, and, and lights, and cameras, and everything else, and, and, and some rock star preachers, you know? We, they, they, they do that, and that works. That, that has become a, a springboard for people to jump into the pool and to, to come into church. It has work. Now, I'm not, I'm not trying to discredit, you know, what we do here, uh, what Alex's, what Alex's work with, and, and the worship band and everything else that happens here. I'm not trying to discredit that, but that is some, uh, a model that we have followed as well, that we have done, things that we have done as well. Uh, our worship services have to become an attractive and cool spring for people to jump into the pool. Uh, but the problem is that those that jump into the pool, into the church, 
do not stay here long. Why? How come they don't stay here long? You know why? Because that is the, sometimes the, 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 the American consumer has the mindset that, you know what, if this is good, there must be something else better out there. So I'm going to go look for it. So they go out and search for, uh, search for something that is much better, something that is, much, that is cooler and bigger and powerful and colorful. It, it, you know, they, 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 they look for those things. But you know what? There's many ways to get into the pool. There's many ways to get into the pool. Not only the springboard, but there's also some steps you can go in, right? There's also uh, one, that, that little rail ladder. Or you can also just, just, just jump in, right, from, from the edge of the pool. Okay? So it doesn't matter what, how we do it. It doesn't matter how they get into the pool or how they come into the church. But, the, the, but what we're trying to do here is that uh, we're trying to keep them uh, uh, in the water and invite their friends into the water and, and, and stay in the water for a long time, you know. Uh, we don't want them to go somewhere else. A lot of churches don't want that, okay. So how do we do that? How do we change from uh, passive spectators to active disciples? How do we turn people from doing, for, to, to do that, Right? So as a church, we must use many, many methods to, to, to do that. So it is amazing how <laughs> the church can spend a lot of money, resources, time, just a, a lot, just to have one hour of worship service. Just one hour, okay? There's 168 hours in the week. And we're spending all this money, we all these resources to keep people connected just for one hour out of 168 hours. Isn't that amazing? So, because they don't turn from passive spectators to active disciples. I'm going to say this. This might be a little harsh. But Jesus... Jesus didn't come to teach us how to put a one-hour worship service together. He didn't. Nope. He didn't. He came to teach us how to make full-time active disciples. He said, I want you to be fruitful. He says, I want you to make fruit and fruit that will last. Not passive that will last. Allow me to share some, and I'll be done. I promise I'll be done here, okay? Matthew 4, 19, 20 says, Come and follow me. This is Jesus. Come and follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people, or fish for men. Uh, once they left their nets and follow him. Matthew 28, 19 says, Therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Mark 16, 15, he said, Go into the world and preach the gospel to all creation. John 5, 16 says, If you said, You did not choose me, but I choose you, and I appointed you that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Finally, Acts 1 a says, But you will receive power in the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and in Judea, and in Samaria, and at the ends, to the ends of the earth. So, are we there yet? As a church, are we there yet? Are, are we there yet? Uh, are, are, we, are we being productive? Are we being productive? Are we going out there and, and, and sharing the gospel? Are we, go, are we going out there and proclaim, proclaiming to the nations? Are we, are, we, are we bearing fruit and fruit that will last? And you know what, church? I think that, I think we're getting there. We're going to get there pretty soon. So, starting in the month of October, um, I have challenged the the staff and some of the uh, life group leaders to um, be part of a program called uh, Everyday Evangelism. 
everyday evangelism. We're gonna, we're gonna, we want to, we want to become a church that proclaims the gospel. We want to become a church that knows how to share the gospel with others. Okay, we want to become a church that 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 can bring people to Christ, not not a passive spectator, but, but a spectator, but but a true disciple of Jesus. That's what we want, because that's what we call. For. Jesus said, "Make disciples, make disciples." So that's what we want to do. One more final verse, and I'll be done. <laughs> I promise I'll be done in two, in two minutes. Acts 9.31 says, the church throughout Judea, Galilee, Galilee, and Samaria enjoyed a time of peace and was, and was strengthened, living in fear of the Lord and encouraged by the Holy Spirit. It increased in numbers. It increased in numbers. So that should be our goal. Our responsibility is to produce and reproduce the result of that effort is going to be a time of peace and strength, encouraged, encouraged by the Holy Spirit, and increase in numbers. But this increase in numbers should be of active disciples, not passive spectators. Would you please stand? Just stand. We're going to sing a song together, and as we do that, I want you to just ponder about this message. I know it's not, it's, it's, it could be a lot, but we, we are called to, to bear fruit, to remain fruitful, to remain as active disciples. So I want you to just think about that for a moment. And as we sing, I want you to I want to encourage you to, to, to pray and to, and to ask God uh, to use your life and to use the life of this church to do just that. We want to be a productive and fruitful church, but that fruit and that, 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 that product has to come from our hearts first and into the world. Let's sing. Name above all names Worthy of all praise And my heart will sing How great is our God Let's sing that once again Name above all names the name above all names, you're worthy of all praise, and my heart will sing how great is our God. Last 30 minutes or so, you have heard me talk about gospel, about sharing your faith. So you may say, you know, what is this guy talking about? What is this gospel that this guy's talking about? And it's simple. It's simple. The gospel is that heaven, heaven is a free gift. Heaven is a free gift. Romans. 623 says, but the gift of God is eternal life to Christ Jesus. So it's a gift. It's, it's given to you for free. You, you can, but the thing is you cannot purchase it. You cannot buy it. You just can earn it. It's, it's a gift. It's something that is given to you. No amount of effort, no amount of money is gonna is gonna is gonna uh, buy it or purchase it. I love what Ephesians two eight nine says: "For the great, for by grace you are saved through faith, and that is not from 
yourselves. He says, it is, it is a gift of God, not from works, so that no one may boast. So how come we cannot earn this gift? It's simple, church, and it's sad. It's because man is a sinner. We all sinners. Mankind is a sinner. Romans 3.23 says, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Because man cannot save himself. We can't save ourselves. See, Jesus said in, in Matthew 5.48, be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Who can be perfect? No one can be perfect. I just, I can't be perfect. No one can be perfect. But God knows that. God knows that, and he's, he, he, he solved the problem himself. But to understand that, we have to, we have to first understand God's nature. And the Bible says that God, that God is love. But at the same time, the Bible says that God is merciful, but it says that God is just, and he must punish our sin. <laughs> Exodus 34, 7 says, yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. So we must recognize our problem. We, can, we must recognize that we are sinners and that we need for God to solve the problem for us because we cannot solve the problem the problem ourselves. So he solved the problem in the person of Jesus Christ. I love what Isaiah 53 6 says, we all like sheep have gone straight. Each of us has turned to our own way and the Lord has laid on him that is Jesus, the iniquity that is the sin of us on on that on him so how do we how do we receive this this gift of eternal life this this gift of of salvation this gift of of heaven how do we receive that and that is through faith now is it is not through head knowledge because you can know a lot about things a lot of things about jesus you can know a lot about, uh, uh, you know, about God. You might read the Bible, but if you don't know Jesus in the personal level, then what you know is useless. Saving faith is not hidden knowledge, like I said. It is not something that is temporary. No, sometimes when we are, we have some financial problems, we go to God and say, God, please help me. Or we're going through some health problems and we say, God, just, just help me out. Give, give me healing. But it is just temporary. Saving faith is trusting in Jesus Christ alone for eternal life. That's how we become followers of Christ. So if you never had asked God for this gift of eternal life, I want to give you that opportunity today. For those who are watching online, or for those who are listening online, I want to give you the opportunity to do that as well. So I want us to pray a prayer. I want to pray a prayer. If you, if you feel that you want to pray this with me, go ahead and do so, okay? Here we go. Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I do not deserve eternal life for I'm a sinner, Father. But I believe you died and gave your life for me and purchased a place in heaven for me. I repent of my sins and now I trust in you and I place my trust in you for my salvation. I accept this gift of eternal life through you, Father, through Christ. Amen. Let's worship God. Let's worship God for that. Let's sing this out, church. Let's sing. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to me. Sings my 
Thank you, Jesus. If you pray that prayer for the first time, I want to uh, encourage you to come and, come and talk to any of us here at the building. For those who are watching online, if you have any questions about that prayer, about the decision, um, send us an email or go to the website and you can fill in a connection card and someone uh, will get back with you uh, soon. Uh, before, I, I, uh, before I let you go, I want to just declare, allow me to declare just a blessing upon your life, yeah? Okay, so may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord, may his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. I hope to see you next week. You are dismissed. One of the interesting things that Michael does is he, as he's closing, he invites us to take a little peek at what the gospel is about. And see, as we were saying, the gospel is like a well-trimmed tree because it should be growing and it should be bearing fruit. And if it doesn't, that's when the great gardener, when Jesus Christ himself comes in and starts to cull away at those parts. He starts to trim at the dead parts of us so that we may be perfected and in fact be able to put and bear more fruit. The same way that a gardener takes care of his tree, Jesus Christ is taking care of our spiritual lives so that we can bear fruit. But if we're not bearing fruit, then that is normally an indication of something in our lives that is not connecting us to him like a tree like a vine we are no longer connected to jesus christ and we need to re-examine our lives and providence if that's you if at this moment you're feeling disconnected from jesus christ just do what michael says at the very end he gives the plan of salvation he lets us know why jesus died on the cross it's because god is merciful and just and because of that we have sinned and we must pay but here's the thing, God, because he is just and also merciful, sent his son to die. So if you repeated that prayer with Michael, I believe that you have been taking the first step in your walk of faith. Go ahead and reach out to us, connect with us, providence.church forward slash connect or the word connect 323-426-220-0905. Go ahead and text that or visit that website so that we can start walking with you and our prayer team can surround you with prayer and help you take the next steps. Because after this, when we start looking at baptism, we start looking at living a life of faith for Jesus Christ. Because just like he has challenged us, we want to make certain that you're able to bear good fruit. So Providence, that does it for me today. I cannot wait to look, uh, to be able to chat with you again next week where we're actually going to be starting a new lesson series called Reset. We'll see you then.